All right. Thank you, Ashlyn. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. We're pleased and really thrilled this morning to have with us uh, Sweat and Crawford, who are going to spend uh, quite a bit of time actually going through exactly how they've been using Zangati for end-to-end -end performance management. And as always, sometimes the, the very best way to learn about something is from somebody who's actually in the field doing it. And so we're very pleased to have the opportunity to share that with you this morning. From a company perspective, Zangati has been in the business of doing end-to-end -end performance management for over four years now, and we have several hundred customers across pretty much every major market segment. The primary thing that Zangati does is that we help customers to identify and anticipate the places where contention exists in a shared services environment. So whether that would be a server-only infrastructure, a virtual desktop infrastructure, we help people understand how performance storms rise up, how they're impacting the environment, and ultimately what can be done to resolve them. Our customer base is very diverse at this point and encompasses everything from major multinationals uh, like GE or eBay um, to service providers like Comcast, um, all the way through banking, finance, retail, legal firms, education, pretty much all of the major vertical market segments. And we have customers whose kind of size of operation ranges from a few hundred or even lower VMs all the way up to uh, several tens of thousands. And so uh, the product is out there in the marketplace doing useful work across a wide range of environments. And today, we're thrilled to introduce to you uh, Travis Conley, who actually uh, runs infrastructure at uh, Sweat and Crawford, and he's going to take you through uh, some of how they came across Zangati, how they're using the product, and, and how it's been useful inside their environment uh, towards the goal of end-to-end -end performance management. Travis? Thanks for the intro. Um, I'll, I'll try to be real brief, but I do want to give you a overview before I get into the product of, of kind of our history. Uh, we are a global insurance wholesale company. Uh, we serve uh, more than a dozen countries globally, and in the U.S., is, uh, we have our largest single footprint. Um, in the U.S., 100% of our uh, end users are using VDI solutions from Citrix. Uh, we're on a Zen desktop platform. Uh, we are in a persistent environment, uh, which um, you know does lend itself to some additional um, issues from a monitoring standpoint. Uh, we, we uh, like I said, we we are 100% VDI. We are also 100% server server virtualized on a VMware platform. So monitoring for us is a really big deal. Um, in the past, we had had um, some performance issues. We had real problems locating and pinpointing those in a way that we could convey to um, our management committees and people outside of IT. Um, as you see in the in the slide there, there's um, one of the things we had uh, when we would go to management was we had no hard evidence, right? They would come back and say, hey, you know, we understand it's slow. We understand you want to spend X amount of dollars. Show us why. Uh, you know, in today's economy, IT budgets aren't quite what they used to be. The uh, the spends are a little bit harder to come by. So without uh, without that evidence, we really didn't have a way to say, "Hey, here's here's why it's slow. Here's what we can do to fix it." Um, and you know, after the fact, here's the result. So, uh, you know, one of the other problems we had in in our particular environment is our staff size. We run very lean. Um, supporting around 1,500 users with a staff of, um, you know, under 10 people nationally um, in IT was, you know, it could be tough. And that's that's a staff from uh, help desk all the way up through my, you know, Cisco guys and uh, everybody in between. So when, when calls were coming in, um, you know, a lot of times they're going to get queued. Um, and if the person didn't get to them quick enough, the data was lost. There was no way to track it. Uh, there was no way to go back in time and say, hey, I see what was happening on your machine. Um, you know, our help desk guys ended up doing a lot of the, um, you know, sorry, reboot and try again kind of thing, which, you know, frustrates your end users. They feel like they're just being blown off um, and being ignored. 
And Zangati really helped us um, in that aspect. And I'll get into that in a little bit, but uh, that that was one of the big wins for us was the ability to really work with our end users with hard evidence, uh, with with real data, uh, and uh, and be able to really service these folks without them feeling like we're just ignoring their problems. If you want to flip to the next slide, we. Uh, Sorry, let's uh, flip one more. We, uh, we're a uh, central data center, um, as you would imagine, being in a 100% you know, virtualized shop. We run on EMC storage. Um, this is our environment prior, kind of a real, real high level uh, shot of our environment prior to our recent refresh. Uh, running EMC storage, HP blades, you know, nothing super outstanding uh, outside of the box, you know, Oracle and SQL databases. Um, it, we just did not have the ability to see true performance data on that virtual environment. You know, we, we could look in vCenter, we could see host IOPS, we could see, you know, performance on the processors and the memory, but we really couldn't dig in and say, okay, this process is running away with this amount of CPU or uh, this user's memory is maxed out and here's why. They're, they're running an application that's not tuned properly or, you know, why are they even running this application? This doesn't fit their job role. Um, so in, in a single centralized data center environment like this, uh, the ability for one rogue user or one bad process or poorly written application to impact your environment, it's, it's, uh, it's a real, real, you know, fact of life and without the right tools to get into that and really diagnose it, uh, a lot of times we're just flying out of the seat of our pants. You know, we, we have network monitoring tools, we have um, Citrix monitoring tools, and they would tell you about that specific product, right? So um, our, for instance, our, our network portal would tell us, hey, this switch is getting high usage on this port, um, and it, that's well and good, but unless I know who's on that port and exactly what they're doing, that's not going to help me a lot. And that's where Zangati really, uh, really made a difference for us. If you want to flip to the next slide. So when we brought Zangati in, uh, we were able to pinpoint a lot of our issues. We had, uh, like so many VDI shops, we had storage IOPS issues. Uh, we couldn't necessarily uh, show anybody but we knew they were there. You know, it's one of those things you know you know that's the problem, but you can't prove it. Well, with Zangati, we could see, hey, we're we're absolutely maxing out this storage array, no matter what the vendor's saying. It's being maxed out. It's not, you know, it's not X Y Z fiber channel switch, or it's not this network port. It's the actual IOPS on the spindles that you know we just don't have enough. Uh, we were able to build that business case with, you know, hey, here's real world data. Here's your VDI when you clicked on Microsoft Word, and here's where it just sat there queuing up waiting for IOPS or queuing up waiting for processor. Um, and, and when you present management with real data, um, it makes a big difference. No matter what the budget uh, environment is in your particular you know, company, when, they, when you bring them real data, especially when it actually you know, comes from their machine, um, or somebody that, you know, they're, in some cases their secretary, you know, who screams the loudest. Um, and you're able to show them, hey, here's why your, your person is losing two hours a day because they're waiting on this application or they're waiting on this database. We can show you real data before and after. That, it, makes, it makes the business case really simple. Um, we're able to now, after the fact, after implementing Zangati, we can monitor for... Uh, potential issues as well. Um, Zangati has some things called Storm Tracker. I'm sure Nathaniel will get into uh, for more pre, uh, proactive, uh, preventative maintenance. You know, hey, watch this. You know, your your IOPS have been at, at this rate for so long, and all of a sudden there's a spike. You need to look at this. Uh, your network rate used to be at this level, and now it's it's kind of going you know, it's up by 15%. This is something you need to look at. Those kind of things, when you're running in a IT environment as lean as we run, uh, and you don't have staff that can just sit there and look at uh, you know, every switch port every day and, and look at every spindle of, of the SAN every day, those kind of real quick, slap you in the face um, kind of metrics make a big difference. 
Uh, you know, one of the the things that stand out the first time you log into the portal is your you know your overall VDI score that Zangati gives you. It's you know kind of a cumulative rating um, of your entire environment, and that that's something that our help desk has on a 50 some odd inch you know screen sitting in front of them all day long. Because it's it's a real quick, real easy way to go. Hey, you know what? It's normally a 98, 99. Today it's a 94. Why is that? And then engage my team to look at you know storage, to look at networking, to look at uh, what's driving that to be um, a lower score. And that's just something we couldn't get from any other tool that we had tried in the past. You know, we we tried a lot of disjointed tools. Um, we looked at store uh, tools from our storage vendor tools from our networking vendors, uh, but nobody was able to bring all that together like we can today. Uh, today we have a, a holistic view because of Zangati uh, from the entire environment, from their, you know, their remote network connectivity at their house, being able to see the latency between that PC and my net scalers, uh, being able to see uh, the usage of fiber channel and, and, and Ethernet switching, being able to see the processor and memory usage, um, you know, being able to see what that newest version of Internet Explorer that the help desk pushed out last week did to our IE environment. You know, um, The newest version of Flash rolled out and all of a sudden IE is, is heating up a lot of processor now. We can see that immediately and correlate that um, back to real data. And that's, that's just something we've never been able to do before. Um, Something that I mentioned earlier, I really want to uh, kind of bring out that it took us a while to realize the value of is their self self support um, module called Virtual Trouble Ticket. And again, I'm sure Nathaniel will get into this. I'm not a sales guy, but I want to push this to anybody out there who uh, goes down the Zangati route. Um, this is a, a huge win for our help desk guys. This, this virtual trouble ticket module will allow an end user to proactively go ahead and open a ticket and start recording of their session on their own. So, you know, hey, my Microsoft Word is really performing slowly. Let me start this ticket. Well, the moment they start that ticket, their session's being recorded like your home DVR, right? So you can skip all the, you know, Advil commercials and you can get to the the big part of the game with that DVR, right? Well, the same thing with this. Um, you can you can get in there and watch what was happening, even though you may talk to this person, you know, hours later. Um, for for us, it's been a huge win. We've uh, we've got a big group uh, over in Hong Kong that is supported out of our group here in Atlanta. Um, as odd as that timing may seem, uh, they're able to do that because of this virtual trouble ticket module. You know, those guys could have a problem at what's two in the morning for us, um, and while they're not getting immediate support, they're able to move on and know that our help desk guys are going to see what happened and be able to fix that after the fact for them without just you know responding. Sorry, uh, must have been something going on. You know, hate it for you guys. They can actually fix the problem, which that that's a big big win. I don't know if anybody if if, if that really comes across as how big of a, a deal that is. Um, if you want to switch uh, switch to the next slide, Nathaniel, I'll just a couple more points, and um, I'll kind of hand it back over to you. you know, like I said, that the the big things for us have been to the end users. Um, they they obviously don't see Zangati day in and day out, but they're getting the benefits from our help desk and our engineering staff being able to have real data to help these folks. They're not chasing their tails. They're not pointing the fingers at each other going, oh, you know, this, this group of users is saying it's slow today. It must be your network. Well, no, it's not. It's, hey, let's, let's look at this, you know, this one CPU core on this one VM host that's now showing up in Storm Tracker as a problem. Hey, look, what do you know? All those people that are screaming are on that same host. You know, we've, we've got real data uh, to help real, you know, fix real problems um, that are impacting our environment in a way we've never been able to do before. We've we've been on this product about um, close to 20 months now, coming up on two years, um, and it's it's honestly been a big game changer for us. I can't say that about a lot of products. Um, 
and I'll make it super clear. I'm not a sales guy. I'm not being. I'm not even. You know, I'm not being compensated for saying this, but it's it's been a game changer for us in our VDI environment. Um, you know, when when everybody is running off the same set of gear, uh, having the ability to dig in and and fix the root cause. You know, do that do that root cause analysis, like it says there on on these problems to head off major problems before they happen or to repair big problems while they're happening, uh, it's, a, it's really a game changer. You know, we're not, we're not guessing. We're not uh, hoping that we're doing the right thing. We're looking at real hard data. Um, and, and it's not even just the VDI side. You know, we utilize this on our server virtualization as well. Uh, because of some of the event correlation data that's in there, um, I can give you an honest example where this saved us a huge amount of time and financial loss as well uh, with, a, uh, with a couple file issues we had on our DFS environment. Um, we were able to correlate actual problems all the way down to the individual user's VDI at a, at a moment in time while it was happening and then re rewind that through the DVR capability, play it back and go, wow, what is this user doing? and then fix it, um, it's something I've never been able to do before. It's always been, well, you know, looks like something's wrong. Let's, you know, let's, let's spend a couple weeks looking at it, and then at the end of those couple weeks come back and go, well, it's not happening anymore. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. Well, now we play it back. You know, we, our whole environment's basically being DVR'd all the time, and all we have to do is go play back the events, and uh, <laughs> we can find the real, real problem. So, Again, it's been a game changer for us. I hope uh, I hope some of this was helpful for you guys. That I'm saying. I hope it wasn't too rambling and uh, and back and forth. But um, it, it really has helped us from our entire environment, from server to, to VDI, um, and a huge benefit to our end users as well. Wow. Well, thank you, Travis. That was that was very helpful. I want to let everybody know that. Uh, after we do a little bit of demonstration to kind of show you some of the things that Travis was talking about, uh, there will definitely be an opportunity to interact uh, with Travis, of course, to ask questions about the, uh, the, the product itself if you want to. Um, so definitely if you've got questions, uh, be thinking about those and uh, planning to get those into the chat window. There's a toolbar at the top of your, your WebEx screen, and um, you can definitely go ahead and toss questions into the chat and we'll come back and, uh, and, and pick that up. And I've also got to tell you that at the very end, we've got uh, a pretty special deal uh, for you guys to actually take advantage of the Zangati tool in your environment uh, with, uh, with a, a free health check from some of our professional services engineers. So more to come um, on that point. But right now what I'd like to do is actually switch over uh, to a demonstration to actually show you the Zangati dashboard and some of the features that Travis was mentioning uh, I want to call out to you so you can see them and kind of get a flavor for exactly what those uh, feel like in, a, uh, in, a, in an environment. So let's see here. What we want is this. So um, Travis uh, mentioned how they were using it with VDI, and so I'll share with you a little bit about our VDI dashboard. Now, this is one of several dashboards we make. We also make a dashboard that's geared around server virtualization that we call the VI dashboard. And I think that as we roll through it, you can see how it would perform in a similar way, despite having slightly different column headers. You can, because this one is geared around desktops, it has the idea of desktop pools, which of course contain desktop users who connect to desktops. The desktops, of course, have clients accessing them, physical machines of one kind or another. There are network paths that connect uh, the clients to the desktops. The desktop instances, of course, actually run on physical hosts in the data center. They have data stores that are taking care of all their information storage. There's paths that interconnect the data stores to the hosts. And there may be application virtualization servers or other core IT servers that are also a part of the infrastructure. 
For example, you're certainly not going to run uh, VDI without an Active Directory server or uh, without DNS resolution or perhaps without um, you know, various provisioning servers in the case of a, of a Zen desktop deployment or um, connection brokers or things of the sort. So taken together, all of these things represent the desktop environment. And what the Zangati dashboard is doing is tracking dozens of metrics across each of these columns and it's matching them up against a set of profiles. Some of those profiles are taken from best practices that are published by VMware and Citrix. And so that's the manufacturer's recommendation on the tin, if you will, to say what is good performance, what is known to be bad performance. And so that forms kind of a backstop so that we never call bad behavior good. The other set of profiles that all of this data is passing through are learned profiles that we learn from watching the normal activity of all of these items. And so if you take a look at it, there's actually a very large amount of data that our dashboard is actually gathering for each of these things. And it ranges from network bit rate, protocol bit rates for, for VDI, um, and if I scroll down this dashboard, you can see there's things here for CPU usage, the active and consumed memory, CPU ready, things for memory blueing, swapping, data store byte rates, IOPS. I mean, just a wide range of metrics, and we're watching all of these things constantly and figuring out what's normal for the environment. When things violate either the best practice or the learned profiles, a couple of things happen. First of all, you will notice that the column headers change color and are no longer green, um, so, and then also the health score is affected. And the health score ends up being affected proportionate to the degree of impact. So if we had one desktop user that's using 5% more CPU than normal, well, there's probably not going to be any change actually to the performance index. On the other hand, if someone were to lose half of their data stores, uh, number one, they wouldn't be on this call. They'd be out chasing that down. But secondarily, there would be a very large impact to the health score because that's a very significant problem inside the environment. Now, as you look at the Zangati dashboard, probably one of the first things that you notice is that there are things actually moving on a second-by-second -second basis. One of the things that's very unique about Zangati is that we use a memory-driven architecture that enables us to process information in real time, and by real time I mean instantly, in fractions of a second and a millisecond, and get it displayed on the screen pretty directly. Now, this comes with it a couple of really interesting technologies. One of them is, is that we treat time continuously. It's not sampled in the sense of we get data every five minutes and so there's dots on a graph. We treat time continuously and I'll give you a scroll bar to be able to move fluidly through to, and continuously through time. And you can see that in this environment, the health score has varied widely. Uh, there have been peaks and spikes of activity. And the reality is, is that this corresponds very neatly with exactly how virtualization is designed to work. Most of you will have things like vMotion uh, or DRS moving things around in your environment, even on an automated basis. And so the environment changes from a moment to moment or minute to minute basis. And workloads can fluctuate widely as users come and go, as server processes start, run, and finish. And being able to see spikes of activity as spikes instead of as rounded over little humps that have been averaged over 5, 10, or 15 minutes ends up being pretty significant operationally. One of the things that Travis mentioned was the ability to get recordings that kind of captured things at the moment or at the time they occurred. And you can see that all of our live screens have this red record button at the bottom along with the transport to kind of pause scrub through time. There's also a record button. And the recordings allow you to capture all of this data in its most granular form. So for network traffic, we see it on a one-second basis. Hypervisor data from VMware comes in at 20-second intervals, since that's what uh, that hypervisor supports. And we're able to capture that data in its raw form without averaging and keep it on a timeline for you to see. So these recordings can be made manually if you know that Tuesday afternoon at 2 o'clock there's a performance problem on the third floor. Well, maybe it would be a good idea to set up some security cameras at key places and kind of watch what was happening. And so you can do that manually, but perhaps more powerfully, the system is using this recording capability all the time and in real time. 
So as you scroll through uh, an environment and you say, well, there's desktop users in distress, you can simply click on the alert icon and it will uh, bring you to alerts that uh, happened in the recent time period. You get the username and it looks like in this case, uh, Mr. S. Wilson is having a lot of network bitrate um, things that were unusual. So he's doing a pretty extraordinary amount of network activity. If we hit the playback button, it will go ahead and load up um, his session and it's going to show us all of the key performance metrics that were related to his environment on an end-to-end -end basis. So we're going to get at the bottom here a variety of hypervisor metrics that are going to show us exactly the consumption that Mr. S. Wilson is putting on the environment. And you can see here that it's all of the, the core things for, for the network, for his VDI session, uh, performance things about CPU contention and usage, active and consumed memory, really what's his footprint on the infrastructure and is, is it normal, is it abnormal. We're also going to get what things he's talking to on the network, which data stores he's connected to and the load he's putting on the data store, uh, potentially things like uh, being able to get the latency of his access to the data store to find out whether he's waiting or not for, uh, for information coming back from the data store. Now, in this particular case, the alert told us that there was, there was high or higher network activity than normal. And we can see uh, his PC over IP rate is running at a, uh, at a certain level. So let's do this. Uh, we'll go ahead and replace this with the network bit rate so we can see, uh, you know, what's going on. And it seems that this level of activity of running about 300 kilobits per second, um, you know, at the very end of this, you can see he's ramping up here um, to, uh, to even several megabits per second. And so we can see exactly what ports and protocols um, and applications, you know, may be in use uh, at the particular time. And so the recordings provide a great way of seeing what's happening um, at the beginning here. We can see that there was actually a big, uh, there was some Google Web activity here, and uh, I can tell you that's probably likely somebody buffering a YouTube uh, video. That, that often shows up as Google Web, depending on what part of the infrastructure it's uh, served from. And you can see at the beginning of this recording, they were all the way up here at, uh, at 13 uh, megabits per second, which is, uh, which is a pretty high level of activity, obviously, for this, this video getting pumped out, um, you know, over, um, over PCI over IP. So you can see end to end what's happening. And we could see immediately that the CPU usage was not that unusual. We could see that the data store latency looked fantastic. And even within the network bit rate being unusual, to be able to see exactly what it's talking to and ports and protocols and things like that. So the recordings are a core part of the Zengati experience because they capture exactly what's going on for a host, for a data store, for a user, whatever part of the infrastructure is affected. Now, these recordings are, are wonderful and they're easy to access, as you can see, just a couple of clicks and you can kind of rewind time to whatever went bump a week ago, three weeks ago, whatever the case might be. And the Zengadi system constantly has your back, if you will, in that way. There are several other things, though, that automate this capability and really raise it to a different level. Travis mentioned that they use the Storm Tracker application quite a bit uh, in order to kind of find out what's going on. So in addition to being able to kind of come to the dashboard and look at this health score and notice that it's less than it normally is and kind of manually click in, there's significant automation inside the Zengadi dashboard. And there's a little icon here that's kind of like a radar scope for finding storms uh, that will bring up a user interface that we call the storm tracker. And you'll notice it opens in a separate window. And so some of our customers that have multiple monitors would definitely have this kind of on a separate one. And you can see here that the storm tracker is busy looking at two different uh, v centers. Uh, one of them appears to be running completely clean. You can see puppy white clouds, if you will. And there's kind of some darker gray storm clouds here. And so if we were to go ahead and go into this vCenter, uh, we can see that there's some memory contention on this particular host. And uh, up here, there's some things having some CPU contention and some other things up here that are experiencing memory contention. So as you look visually at an environment, you can see the individual ESX hosts 
and then the virtual machines that are within that host. And so if we wanted to, of course, it would be a simple matter to go ahead and drill into uh, to the memory contention. And it basically shows us that, you know, there's these 17 items that are involved in this memory contention. Now, there's one of these recordings for Zengati behind every row of this table. But rather than go through all of these individually, it might be significant to let the tool actually do the work and try to come to some conclusions. And so we have some buttons here to generate an analysis and a recommendation on what to do about this particular storm. And for the analysis, uh, there were 17 virtual machines uh, that, that were indicated. And you can see uh, them listed out here inside of the, the data center. It says some of the alerting VMs looks like one, two, three, four, five of them have significantly higher consumed memory than the other VMs, as well as excessively high memory ballooning. And the memory contention is likely caused by high consumed memory of these VMs. So kind of interesting. Um, out of the, the 17, not all of them are at fault. Uh, it looks like a handful of them are overgrazing the commons and causing issues for the others. Now, at this point, that's useful information by itself, but there's a couple of questions I think that most people would want to know, to Travis's point, about getting down to uh, the base root cause so that you can actually say with data, this is a problem and we need to fix it, or this is just a transitory thing and we can safely ignore it. Making that determination, you would need to know, does this pattern of activity happen all the time? Is it getting worse? Is it affecting more objects? Is it shrinking? Uh, what's it doing over time? And so in the recommendation, we actually graph the frequency, the duration, and the severity over time in a metric that we call storm intensity. And this is a 30-day graph. And you can see that um, roughly 30 days ago, there was only one instance of this, and then nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened. Um, and then somewhere here around the 4th, um, something changed, and all of a sudden we start getting storms. Uh, for a couple of days, uh, we had a day where nothing happened, and then in the last couple of days here, it's taken off like a rocket um, and really become much more severe. So this is something that didn't happen but has started happening. And a question might be, is this, um, you know, how does this correlate with the actual capacity of the system? And you can see that in this case, this host is actually running pretty high capacity, actually. And it seems that, you know, in the last couple of days, it started to go above even its average line a little bit, and all of a sudden things have really spiked up. Small change here, big change in impact to resources. And so, it looks like we either need to add more physical memory to the host, or we need to get one, of, one or a couple of those five virtual machines with extra demands, put them onto a different host. And so the storm tracker, at this point, we're literally four mouse clicks into, uh, into the storm tracker. It provides a very quick way to visualize a large swath of infrastructure and then enable you to kind of get down to a root cause. I mean, this particular example was more on server virtualization than on desktop virtualization. But I think you can see, uh, to Travis's point, that you know, this covers both sides of the environment, if you will, and can very easily drill down and get you towards things that have happened. And of course, like all our screens, you can literally see exactly how storms manifest over time. Are they constant? Do they come and go? Um, you know, that kind of thing is, is immediately visible. One of the other things that Travis mentioned was our visual trouble ticket and how useful that was for supporting end users. And so I want to take the time to show you our visual trouble ticket because it's another way to capture the end user experience. This is a web portal that is actually served by the Zangati appliance. Uh, it's a simple web form that is brandable. You can replace the logos and the text uh, to say whatever you'd like them to say. And this is the entire user interface. The whole idea is that someone would put in their username, an email address, perhaps a phone number, and then whatever their experience is. Mail is broken. Google is slow. The Internet is down. My desktop is slow. I can't log in. Whatever it is that they think um, you know, is their problem, they could go ahead and type that in. And when they click Create Visual Trouble Ticket, that's when the magic happens. What happens is on the Zangati appliance, 
we make a 15-minute recording with a one-minute pre-roll buffer of whatever that user is doing. So if their mail is slow, we're able to see in great detail exactly what's happening. And what I'll do is give you a flavor for the kind of information uh, that would actually be captured. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick uh, one of the users that's in my environment. And the recording would contain all of the hypervisor information. So this is the things uh, that we've looked at where far as like end-to-end -end, from data stores through the CPU, the memory, uh, and all the way through to the network traffic, the interactions across the network traffic, uh, as well as the data stores with the latency, uh, the IOPS, uh, the throughput. So however we wanted to look at this, we could go ahead and see that um, you know, over time. There are several other bits of information that would be gathered by the system uh, that have to do with the performance of that individual desktop. One of them is the Windows System Viewer, and the second is um, a desktop session viewer. And I'm going to call both of these up. Now, what is happening while this is loading here is it's actually logging into this desktop instance via the Windows management interface. And this would happen automatically as part of the recording. And our purpose in doing so is to be able to drill into some of these metrics. For example, we see that this person is using a certain amount of CPU. Um, if we change this out, we could see that um, you know, they've consumed a certain amount of memory, and of that memory, um, a certain amount of it is active. And we might have questions. You know, why is the CPU at this level? Why, what's consuming the memory? How does that lay out across the machine? You know, I see PC over IP. What is that bandwidth being used for, and what's the end-to-end -end latency or, you know, across a WAN or other things that might be affecting the protocol stream? And these viewers uh, go ahead and give us a very detailed view of what's happening inside the machine. And what they do is we'll actually graph out um, what's happening from the perspective of that guest. And so it's going to come in here, first of all, and show us some things that we're pulling from, uh, from WMI about the disk I.O. and the network packet rate. And then we're also going to fill in here, uh, as the samples come in, the processes by CPU and the processes by memory. And you can see that this desktop is currently running uh, the Acrobat Reader. There's some type of script running on it. Um, you know, you can see exactly what's consuming system resources at this time for CPU or memory. And the interesting thing is, is this is correlated on a second-by-second -second basis with exactly um, what is being shown for the hypervisor. And so you can see exactly what's consuming memory. If you have a Java instance that's run away with memory, for example, and has got, you know, a gig and a half of RAM used up, or maybe um, Internet Explorer is consuming 99% of the processor, well, those are easy problems to diagnose with this tool because you can see it and you can solve it with a control alt delete or running task manager to kill it. It's not actually a VDI problem or a, a, a you know a server virtualization problem that the hypervisor is slow or impacted. It's actually just something that needs to be solved um, at the application layer. And so this tool would be something that would be producing data as part of that visual trouble ticket. The other thing that you would get in the case of a VDI desktop is you would get our PC over IP session viewer that actually displays a number of uh, protocol specific things or in Travis's case it says HDX at the top because he's a Zen desktop shop. And what it will do is show the end to end latency. It will decompose the, the PC over IP or HDX bit rate to image audio USB. Uh, for HDX, it's a little more granular. You can see printer traffic and a couple other things as well. But you can actually see what's going on, how many frames per second. You may be able to see things about um, packet loss or uh, things about the decoder. And some of those things are protocol specific between PC over IP or HDX. But this gives you a, an ability to actually inspect inside the protocol and see true uh, kind of performance over time. If somebody's only getting 10 frames a second, uh, consistently, and it's very jerky for them, well, that's not a surprise, right? I mean, you probably need 15 to 20 to 30 frames a second to really make a video look like it's running clean. So uh, these tools allow you to do very deep inspection of what's going on, and having that available every time a user raises their hand to complain is a big improvement over somebody just filing an email saying, hey, my email's slow, can you take a look at it? Well, 
you know, you've got a complete picture of the true end-to-end -end environment that that user is operating in. Of course, there are a wide variety of reports to view this information uh, over a historical time, whether that would be to find things that are using a lot of capacity, to find things that are over-provisioned, uh, whether it would be looking at cross-sections of the infrastructure to see how are my hosts utilized over time, uh, and to be able to see things for CPU usage, uh, like one of my hosts, this green one, is really almost twice as active as some of these other hosts. Maybe there's a load balancing opportunity there. Or I could look at my data stores and potentially see spikes of activity that might cause me to say, hey, I need to rebalance workload or I need to add spindles or, you know, other sorts of things. And to Travis's point, you can document a wide variety of things using the Zengati dashboard. So the Zengati dashboard is really designed around providing end-to-end -end performance management. Its goal is uh, to eliminate blind spots in the infrastructure, to show clearly exactly where problems are, and give you really kind of full picture visibility uh, with a video camera light visibility across the whole infrastructure from beginning to end. And it's not static reports, it's not dots on a graph, it's the ability to see it continuously across time, whether the communication is happening physically, virtually, be able to record, replay, use things like the visual trouble ticket to actually capture the end user experience. And uh, it's a simple virtual appliance. It deploys as an OVF and is able to be installed very quickly and is, uh, is a nice self-contained solution to the problem. So at this point, um, what I want to do is to uh, break out to the, uh, to the question and answer piece. And we'll go to the phones, if you will. Um, go ahead and in the chat, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open this up and see what we, um, what we might have here and uh, take a look. So if you have questions for myself or especially for Travis, um, please go ahead and put those into the chat and uh, we'll, be, we'll be glad to take them. It's a great opportunity to, uh, to, to talk with, uh, with Travis. I don't know how many of you would have an environment 100% virtualized, but he's busy running one, and so you might even have questions about how we came to um, you know, do that, what were the significant challenges or things like that. So um, we'll, be, we'll be glad to take those. Now, the first one that I've got here um, is, is the VTT available for the server environment? Um, meaning, uh, Joe, the application admin for IIS, is seeing slowness on his VM server. Can VTT be utilized in the server environment? And the answer is yes. Um, in the desktop world, it's easy because the user is logged into a desktop. But if you have a server administrator who is logged into, um, you know, Windows 2008 R2 instance or, a, a, you know, a, a 2012 instance, um, they could absolutely point at that same portal and kick off a recording for, um, for their server VM. So while perhaps it's more common in our customer base in the VDI side, it is just as functional inside a server environment if you've made your server admins um, aware of it. So hopefully that answers your question, Larry. Uh, if you want to ask a follow-on, you know, please, please feel free um, to... Uh, to, to, to jump in. So, Travis, uh, I actually wanted to, to ask you uh, a quick question. Um, you guys are 100% virtualized. Can, can you talk about kind of how long that's been the case? Like, over, like what's the journey been to, to get there, and why did you guys kind of go all the way rather than reserve a couple key things that, you know, maybe we want this to run on physical because it's our big database or something? How did you get past those things and get the whole environment virtualized? Well, for us, uh, a lot of it came down to disaster recovery um, strategy. Uh, being in a virtual environment really enables some additional capabilities from a DR perspective that you just don't get from a physical perspective. Um, and, and with today's hypervisor host performance, um, there, really, there really is nothing that we have found in any of our testing that we can't make perform as good or better on a virtual environment um, than a physical. Um, you know, you will still time, from time to time run into a, 
a random vendor who says, "Hey, we don't we don't support a virtual environment." And quite honestly, I, I don't. You know, my response to them typically is, "I don't care," um, because you shouldn't care. In the end, it's um, if you know if, if you've got an issue that's that's that big of a problem, um, then it, it's not. Um, it's not going to come down to virtualization. It's going to come down to a, a you know a problem within the application. So for for us, um, you know, we have the ability now to you know have mobile applications that we can move from data center to data center for disaster recovery. Um, it, we sometimes will move them for performance as well. Um, it it allows a lot of functionality that we didn't have before. Um, and honestly, maintenance is is really good for us now. We almost never do anything outside of business hours um, unless it's physically going to take down the network host. Um, you know, we we virtualize our storage layer as well, so you know we move applications from host to host, uh, shut down a host, do maintenance on it, bring it back in, and nobody knows anything happened. It's um, it's it's been a really good good thing for us, and so it's a big morale booster for my guys too because they don't have to work crazy after hours, um, you know, late nights and weekends anymore. In terms of the Zangati tool, does pretty much everyone on the team use it, or do they just kind of have learned to rely on kind of the virtualization folk that, that do use the tool to, to kind of speed things up? How does no, it work into the workflow? It really, um, it, it started out, to be completely honest, it started out with my um, Zen Desktop guys, right? They were um, in love with it, uh, and it moved into the help desk very quickly. Um, but now, now that it's kind of it's you know it's been proven, it's been uh, everybody on the across all the teams have have seen the value. It gets used across the entire stack. You know, my network guys are using it to look at uh, utilization on uh, VLANs and inter interhost interconnects. Um, my help desk guys um, are using it, obviously heavy day in and day out. My performance. Uh, my storage guys are using it for performance uh, to compare against what they're seeing from the EMC array, to compare against their their stats they're getting from VMware. Um, everybody across the team, and, and I can't say this enough. I'm not a sales guy, and this is going to sound really marketing kind of guy, but everybody in our entire IT group uses the tool. Um, they may not be in it every day. Um, but I would say, on average, at least once or twice a week, every member of my team is in the tool uh, for one reason or another, whether it's helping uh, to troubleshoot a help desk issue or if it's planning for a new deployment. Uh, you know, we're, our company's in kind of high acquisition development, you know, mergers and acquisition mode right now. Um, and we're constantly being asked, you know, hey, we're, gonna, we're looking at this company of 200 people what would it take to bring those people on board? Then I can tell them really closely to um, what it's going to actually take because I know, you know, X amount of people are on these hosts today. Here's the average usage. Here's what it takes. Here's what happens when I add another user to that host. Here's how many more I can add before I'm going to have a problem. It makes that kind of planning a lot easier for me. Um, and you know, it makes my reporting to hey, why did we spend a half million dollars on these, this new storage array last year? Well, here's why. Here's the difference. Here's where it was last year. Here's where it is this year. And oh yeah, here's where your level of complaints was last year on your help desk tickets. Here's where they are today. It's quite a difference, and I can show that. So it, it's a it's a big deal for everybody across the staff. Interesting. Now. Talk a little bit about, um, you know, how, how hard was it to get there? I mean, what was the training like that you went through? Were people able to kind of figure it out? I mean, I guess I'm expected to make the tool sing and dance, right? I work for the company. Um, but to get those kind of benefits, what was it like for the, for the staff to get there? Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. The implementation, um, I think we spent three hours on the implementation, Somewhere in that neighborhood, two and a half, three hours um, total implementation time. Okay. Um, because it's it's really simple. Um, if you're in, in in our type infrastructure where we have, um, you know, we're we're basically conforming to VMware best practices today, and think you know nothing's really crazy. And setup and installation was super simple. Um, I think we did, I don't know, maybe four or five hours of training, 
you know, I've got a good staff. I'm not going to lie. My guys are good. But, um, you know, I've also got entry-level help desk guys that learned it in a couple hours. Um, you know, I've got a guy that's sitting over there straight out of college um, and had no real-world experience at all, and it just made sense to him. I mean, you guys, you know, you saw the dashboards all ago. I mean, it's pretty simple. It's, you know, scale of 0 to 100. Um, you know, it's very kind of Sesame Streetish. you know, red, good, <laughs> you know, you know, green, good, red, bad, you know. Uh, so it's 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 simple, um, and you know maybe they don't get everything. You know, the help, entry level help desk guys may not be able to get everything out of it, but it gives them the tools to be able to come to my guys on the senior side and speak to them intelligently and say, look, here's a problem we're seeing. Can you help us investigate this? Instead of going, you know, the user says it's slow. What are you going to do? They they actually can speak intelligently about the product, um, and you know again it's helped morale within our. Um, our groups in the company as well. Very good. We've got a question on the on the line here. Um, are you using Zangati for anything related to security tracking issues, resolution, etc.? Does it does it do anything for you in that way? We aren't. Um, we have we have investigated that in some fashions and trying to do some correlation between security events and seeing what's happening on an individual workstation at that moment in time. And personally, I'm not saying it couldn't be done. We just haven't done it internally. It hasn't become our big focus yet. Um, okay. For us, like I said, we, we've been in acquisition mode, so it's, for us it's been turn and burn on, on acquisitions. So we haven't had, the, unfortunately, the time to spend on security. But I, I think it could definitely have a play there. You may be able to speak better to that, Nathaniel, but um, I, I think that could definitely be a play. Yeah, I don't think we've. Uh, you know, we've I, I mean, I think the tool could could help augment um, existing security things, just because it does keep a pretty good record of what's what's kind of gone by over time, if you will. I think so. I think from that standpoint, it would work in conjunction with other security tools. That you know, if you felt like something had either happened or there was a set of alarms and you wanted to drill in um, into the virtual side of the infrastructure, in particular to see what was going on for a particular web server or, you know, a database or something, uh, the Zangati would at least give you the ability to kind of drill it and understand what was going on um, in pretty great detail and obviously to be able to keep a record of it if, if, if that was required. So I don't know if that, if that covers it for you, Larry, but, uh, but I think that's, that's the, the brief answer I'd give for you. Yeah, I mean, the one, way, the one way you might be able to play that as a security play also is when you do have an event um, to be able to go back in time and go, okay, that definitely was this user um, running this application, and was it legitimate or not? Um, yeah, the DVR functionality may be able to make a big play on that. Um, that's actually not a bad thought of, a, of something to investigate on my side. Okay, very good. Um, are there any other questions? Um, we'll kind of, I'll kind of stall for a moment here and give you a chance to, to type, but if there are no other questions. We'll head into uh, into the wrap up um, of the event. And what I want to do is release to you our webinar offer. It is good to for everybody who is on this webinar. Uh, we are offering a complimentary health check of your VDI or your server environment. Uh, I think we may have missed that on the slide. It doesn't matter to us whether it's VDI or server side. And there's going to be a sign up on the thank you page as you exit the webinar. And what will happen is, is we will put the dashboard in your environment and we will provide you with access to our systems engineers and professional services folk and they will make sure that the appliance is gathering data and then go ahead and read it out for you. So without you having to uh, even spend as, as few as a couple hours learning the tool, we will actually read the data out for you, show you the opportunities for, uh, for optimization, for enhancement if there are any problems. Um, or things that, you know, maybe you've got some load balancing opportunities or uh, whatever the case might be, uh, we'll go ahead and give that to you for free. So it's an opportunity to kind of take advantage of some of our engineering time, frankly, and uh, kind of prove this in your own environment, if you will. So uh, definitely take advantage of that uh, as you leave the, the webinar. I want to thank you personally uh, from Zangati for your time and attention today. It was certainly a pleasure, Travis, having you on the call, and we appreciate you sharing what's uh, been happening at, at SWEAT. And uh, decent, 
a, you know, very, um, you know, decent sized environment, I think, for, for most people on this call. And certainly you gave a very clear indication about how you're using Zangati and its importance to the environment. And so uh, we appreciate your willingness to take an hour out of the day and uh, answer questions for the, for the broader community. Of course, if anyone uh, has questions that didn't get asked, or you feel like you'd rather have some personalized attention on a non-broadcast forum, uh, please just reach out to us at info at and we'll find the right resource for you, whether that's uh, somebody on the engineering side, on the sales side, uh, whatever it is, we'll be happy to uh, get you in touch with somebody who can answer your question effectively. And with that, we'll go ahead and uh, close the webinar today. This will be available on a replay. You can check the Zangati website for details. So thank you, and enjoy the rest of your day.